All right, so we are now ready for the third operation in exercise number one, and that's going to be that open pocket right here along with everything around the edges. And the reason I say the edges is because we do have radius around all of these edges, and I will do them all at the same time. Okay, so let's get started on that. First, let's go ahead and get rid of these toolpath for the previous operations by just selecting the toggle display, and it will get rid of these toolpath. Okay, so go ahead and zoom in. I'm going to move my part up for a reason. And let's go ahead and get started. 2D toolpath, select contour. And now you're ready to select the contour. We want to select the contour, a chain around all the outside edges of the part. Now what I want you to do, the best way to do this is go ahead and go over any of these lines, right click on it, and come down here to select tangency. What that does is, is select everything attached to that line, to that edge. And then it connects it all together. You're going to see that blue dotted line in the back, which means that's you know it's a line on the back side of it that you can't see, and uh, goes all around the part. Now, when you have that done, uh, one big thing and important thing to do while you're at this section is go to chain, so you can see that this is actually all one chain. Now, once you go to chain and select it, you're going to see that there's a start arrow right here. Okay. Now that start arrow, I actually really need don't want it to be in this pocket. So uh, it's very good to build up a habit, a habit that not to start in the pocket because now your tool will come down in the middle of this pocket, start machining and start going over around the part. You would rather that tool come down uh, in somewhere on the side where there is no material and then start machining. Okay, so you don't want to ruin your tool uh, very fast like that, especially not have your machine. If you come down a little too fast, it might ruin your tool and your machining. So you definitely don't want that. So to, to move this starting point, just come down, down here under start point and then keep selecting either the forward button or the backward button. For example, I really wanted to start somewhere right here or right here. So I'm going to cl keep clicking back and it will keep following the line, the edges, until it gets to where you want it to go. So I'm going to say I'm going to start it right here. So I'm happy with that right here. So I'm going to go ahead and click on OK. And there we go. So now the 2D toolpath and counter parameters box will pop up. So let's go ahead and go to tools. So now you remember you can select any of the previous tools, which really would be the smart thing because you would save time. But I have some important thing. Okay, so I have an inch diameter um, end mill that I'm already using. So for example, if I take this away, I have an inch diameter, which would be a half an inch radius. Well, what are these rounded corners right here? Uh, they're half an inch radius, which works out perfect. So there's a reason why I chose a one inch radius end mill to machine the surface is because I know I was going to go back and use it here. So one very important thing to do before you start machining even is just to go around and think about all the features that you have and see if you can combine some of these tools together so you can save some time as well. Otherwise, you're going to have your machine stop so you can either change the tool or if you're lucky, you will have a CNC machine that has tool changing capability that you'll come that will be come down here and change the tool real quick and go back to machining. But even that is still a waste of time. So I'm going to go back up here, select my one inch tool and uh, always in the comment section. I didn't do this in the previous uh, contour, uh, the operations that I've created, but it's really nice to uh, place a comment over here because this will be seen by the operator or the end user in the NC code so they know what that operation does. So if I just want to select that in the comments and type in uh, contour or say outside contour, this way just the, the operate or open pocket, you know, whatever it will tell the user or operator that this is what I'm doing in this operation. So for the holder, you can keep the holder the same. Cutting parameters, let's go ahead and keep it where 2D, keep all these options the same, okay? And uh, for the stock to leave on wall, and you can also keep, change this to 0 0.005, and this will allow us to do a finishing operation if I leave, if I leave a certain amount of stock on the wall. So as I'm machining this, I'm going to leave a little bit on the wall so I can do a finishing operation with it. So the cutting depth, I can do a cutting depth if I want, but again, this is more for pockets. I'm bringing my tool underneath this, so I'm not going to be using that underneath the, the entire uh, thickness of the part. Lead in and lead out, I'm going to keep those the same. Breakthrough. Now, this is important to do is go ahead and click on breakthrough. And let's go ahead and make a breakthrough 0.01. So that means the tool will be underneath the part by 0.01. 
and this will eliminate if you actually keep it at zero or don't check it your tool might come down to the just to the bottom of, the, of here and it will machine it now the problem with that if if the, if there's anything about the part that's a little bit off you're going to leave some burrs around the part so you always want your tool to be breaking through when machining an entire side of the uh, side like that okay so anytime you're machining the outsides an open pocket like that you want to make sure that there's a breakthrough for the tool okay now multi passes you don't need multi passes over here uh, okay so I'm gonna uncheck that the only reason you will need multi passes if that it will not do this pocket so looking at this pocket I can see that my tool will actually not finish off these uh, pockets by just one pass so actually I'm gonna go back to multi passes select it and let's go ahead and just select two and I'll show you how to go back there go back here and change it to more if there's some material that's left over over here so now that you're done with that go to link and parameters and same thing over here I'm gonna go to clearance uh, keep it at 2 0.25 for retract incremental feed rate as 0.2 the uh, top of the stock is 0 and for this one I'm just gonna look I'm gonna click on increment okay the reason for that is because I already have a breakthrough of 0.01 so, so I don't really need to verify this one I don't need to change this at here at all click on apply and click on OK again you can change the tooling now one right away I can see there's something wrong because there's no toolpath over here and that's one thing about this uh, tutorial is that I like to keep some mistakes or some things that may happen that don't look right because you need to learn that these there's a way to fix these so I can see that the toolpath comes down here and goes up over here so that I know that it's machining probably the opposite section that I want machined now if I just click on the verify operation so you can see what I'm talking about and click on play you're gonna see that the part comes down in the middle here and starts machining and it's really what it's doing machining everything but the parts that I want basically the opposite side of what I want machine let's go ahead and fix that so come over here go back to parameters come over here under cut parameters and then we're gonna change the compensation direction to right okay that's all it is so click on apply click on okay you're gonna see that the toolpath disappears but you have a dirty operation because we've changed some parameters so come over here under uh, regenerate all dirty operations and there you go you're gonna see now the toolpath is all around my part so come over here under verify and let's go ahead and see how that looks so this is only gonna show us this section and not the previous ones I'm gonna close this real quick remember we only have this operation selected and the more operations you create sometimes you don't want to verify every single one if you already know the rest work so you can come over here to just this operation and click on verify and let's go ahead and play that and you're gonna see it'll come down it'll start over here and it seems like those two passes that I've created those two multi passes were enough you don't see any more material being left over over here and that's exactly what we want you're gonna notice that these radiuses in the corners are being machined and then also this one is not machined because in my part if I'm gonna exit out of this real quick you're gonna see that this is a sharp corner but I have radiuses all around the rest of my part so there you go this concludes uh, this section and uh, the uh, uh, open pocket that we've uh, machined third operation and then finally in the next session we're gonna be learning how to create this chamfer and conclude our session